Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Channel 666 News. My name is Jonathan Weiss, and we're here to bring you today's top news. To start off, news and science. Scientists have developed monster rabbits. That's right, you heard me, monster rabbits. Not that type of monster rabbits. Instead, glow-in-the-dark rabbits. The reasoning for this is scientists insert genes into the rabbits that allow them to see whether or not the gene was accepted or not. The gene they chose was glow-in-the-dark gene the jellyfish. And this is a visible, a visible gene that allows them to make sure that the process worked. The rabbits that glow also have a, a gene to produce protein in their milk that can be collected instead of manufactured synthetically in factories. This process is looked at to be cheaper than the current process being used. And scientists are developing it rapidly. Moving on to our next story, sea serpents are real. Yes, you heard me, sea serpents are real. Well, not as real as that, however, the sea serpent that many, uh, that is believed that uh, sailors confused was the oarfish, which can grow up to 11 feet long and have eyes the size of half dollars. These fish live in deep waters that go up to 1,000 feet deep and are hardly seen because of this, so they are hard to research. However, this fish here is believed to be the elusive sea serpent that many sailors in the past have drawn and depicted. This one here was found on the beach of Carolina <coughs> Island and is 23 feet long. It was dragged in while a group of researchers were snorkeling and is one of the few specimens that have actually been collected and able to be researched on. And our last story, the zombie apocalypse is on a rise. While these may not be the zombies we are going to be seeing, the zombies are individuals that have started using a drug called crocodile. This drug, crocodile, eats away your skin, as seen here, making you into a drug zombie. Crocodile is derived from morphine and uses substances such as gasoline to do so and is highly addictive. However, when people inject it into themselves, one of the main effects is that it destroys tissue and most of these individuals require limbs to be amputated. This drug has, uh, received, nation, uh, has received international attention in 2010 from Russia where this drug has become very popular and there has been recent news reports of it making its way to here in the United States. Don't do this drug. Now, moving on to weather with Anthony. Thank you, John. Uh, for the past week, we had some pretty nice weather, but for this upcoming work, we get uh, going to get a lot worse, is what seems to be happening. So for Monday, we have a forecasted volcano. It's affected to, uh, or expected to spew out a lot of lava, causing a bunch of traffic in the area. But on the plus side, kids are thrilled about it because they get to play a real-life game of The Floor is Lava. And of course, on that day, temperatures will be rising to about 1,000 degrees. Now on Tuesday, as you can see, we have, a hurry, or we have a superstorm Vladimir. Now the cause of this, according to the National Weather Service, is that Gangnam Style was in fact a rain dance. And because of everyone doing it, we've created a superstorm. So that is what's in the forecast for Tuesday. And for Wednesday, we're looking at a shark NATO. Now there's going to be about a hundred or hundreds of sharks all around the area, and they will be aggressive. It is advised that you do not make contact with them, and if you do, to um, defend yourself in any way possible. Now for Thursday, all equally crazy, we have a snow apocalypse. We're expecting about 40 to 50 inches of snow um, all around the area, which will add to that traffic jam from Monday's volcano. So Thursday will not be a very good day. Luckily on Friday, though, this, this weather will be kind of going away with Godzilla coming to town. He's going to destroy the city, but he will fix the previous weather pattern. He'll set everything right. He'll take care of the lava, he'll stop the Gangnam style, he'll fight off the sharks, and he will melt all of the snow. So we will definitely be very grateful to Godzilla, who is going to be here on Friday. Now, for the weekend, the weekend is looking a lot better after this crazy week. For the weekend, we're looking at about uh, 85 on Saturday and sunny. And the same thing with Sunday. It's going to be very, very, very nice weekend. I hope you enjoy it. Now, for this week, uh, as it is going to be crazy, us here at Channel 6 have decided to get a kit to prepare you for the week coming up. Now, for Monday, let's see if we can get this open here. For Monday's volcano, you're definitely going to want to be able to run away from that volcano. You do not want to get caught in that lava, so make sure that you have your running shoes ready. And then for Tuesday, for Tuesday's storm, with all the rain and the wind, I want to stay dry with an umbrella. 
And then, for that Sharknado, if you do happen to come in contact with a shark, you're going to want to be able to defend yourself. Now, traditional weapons need ammo. Slingshots, don't. Slingshots are good to defend yourself from those, uh, those sharks. And then Thursday is snow apocalypse. Definitely going to want to stay warm with your gloves and your hat. And then Friday, you don't really got to do much, you just want to stay out of Godzilla's way. So while you're out of his way, you might as well watch him, but get the full viewing experience, and watch him in 3D. So don't forget your 3D glasses. They can be purchased on our website. And then, for the weekend, you're going to want to enjoy it after that week, so make sure to have your sunglasses, and if you plan on going to the pool, you're definitely going to want to have your pool noodle to have some fun at the pool. And now for a word from our sponsor. Halloween over the weekend, which is weird, because I got into the spirit of brunch over the weekend, and that's totally different. They compiled a list of 13 actual places believed to be the entrances of hell. And we're going to relay them to you, okay? Go check out the article for more information on these places. It is incredibly fascinating. But we are going to take the names of these places, and we're going to grossly mispronounce them. And then, because of the spooky nature of this list, we're going to tell you all of this stuff in the vein of a game show announcement. So, so it's then, the Plutonian at Hierapolis. This bottle was rediscovered in 1965. Sacred Pluto, god of the dead, and just so happens to sit about toxic papers that will kill animals. And sometimes he got the previously source paper and he's going to be that door right there. So it wasn't really sacred now back to you. Fangdu China. Ah, uh, yes, please, Fangdu China. I'm glad you brought it up. We have fantastic Fangdu, or as it's called among the crazy in the city of the dead. It is believed to be a spot where people stop after they die before going on to the afterlife. Because dead or not, there are always errors to run. Oh, yeah. I love that sardonic way. I'm more. Next up is the Masaya Volcano, which is where the aboriginals have originated, if you know what I mean. <laughs> While we're on the site, it is not believed to be an entrance to hell. It was itself believed to be a god and contain a sorceress. I think we can all agree, how cool would that be? Nothing like a good sorceress to spice up your own. Next up, we have the seven gates of hell. If you pass all seven gates, you enter hell, but no one has ever made it past the third gate. Though rumor has it, the fourth gate. Okay, that's legitimately scary. 
Yeah. Let's tell us the scariest place you've ever been in the comments down below. And of course, click the like and subscribe button. Click the annotation. Come over to suicide.com. I'm Lily Morgan. I'm Lily Morgan. Uh, and now to over uh, to Kyle, who has the other report. And thank you, Osman. Okay, we'll start off with a little financial news. Uh, we have the S and P 500 at a nine-month high of 1,777 dollars, uh, which is actually really good. Uh, the entire stock market really took a bit of a nosedive after the government shut down. So this is good news for us. Uh, let's see, we have the Dow Jones average at 15,690 and the NASDAQ at 3965. All are currently highs. Um, the NASDAQ just did a three month high. Okay. And then uh, we have some exciting news for Twitter. Uh, if you've heard Twitter is planning on going public from a private company, their initial public offering is slated to roll out November 4th. Uh, however, they are having some little, shall we say, problems because their IPO won't start until the 4th. And there are some overzealous investors out there that seem to be con confusing the company with another company called Tweeter. Electronics retailer appears to have gotten caught up in the investor fever for Twitter. Shares of Twitter Home Entertainment Group rose as high as 15 cents Friday. That's up 1400% from Thursday's closing price of one cent. And trading volume skyrocketed to 14.4 million shares. The Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, Wall Street's industry regulator, said the shares were halted Friday afternoon because of a misunderstanding related to the possible initial public offering of an unrelated security. But what could have got investors so confused? Twitter trades over the counter under the TWTRQ symbol. Twitter last week offered investors details about its highly anticipated IPO and proposed the stock symbol TWTR. But San Francisco-based Twitter stock won't be available for trading until the company actually goes public. That could be before Thanksgiving. This has been your second. Now, this is extremely funny because I'm not sure what this says about the, I, the IQ of Twitter followers who might want to invest, so, yeah. Okay, and then moving on, we have J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, right now, they are currently being fined by the federal government. They're in settlement talks right now. Um, and basically, so over time, we've had, since 2008 and the whole crash, we have had some different precedents set. There have been the too big to fail and more recently the too big to sue precedents where because of either of these uh, situations major financial institutions could fail and so the government really can't even sue these companies because it might cause them to go under because they're still somewhat fragile. However, recently it has shown that they're not too big to fine. In this case, J.P. Morgan is being fined by the federal government $13 billion, and that's a lot of zeros. So personally, I think that actually the government just coming out of some financial times actually just needs a little bit of pocket cash, and so they're going to their friends over at J.P. Morgan going, you know, you should probably repay us for what you did to us in 2008. Now, I don't know if you've ever, like, say, borrowed five, ten dollars for someone, like, and then, like, you can ask them back for it, like, up to maybe a week later, but when it gets to be, like, oh, like, seven years after, it's kind of awkward to ask somebody for money back from something that happened, such as the crash of 2008, so we'll see what happens. Thank you very much for joining us here at Channel 6 News. Stay geeky, NJIT, and enjoy your Halloween.